inelastic neutron scattering what exactly it is and how it occurs hello everyone welcome back to the channel today we'll study about inelastic neutron scattering so let's start with the basic the neutron scattering is classified into two types that is elastic and inelastic neutron scattering in 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 elastic neutron scattering a momentum is transferred from the neutron beam to the sample but in this process the internal state of the sample remains unchanged whereas when we talk about inelastic neutron scattering here an excitation is seen in the sample after the neutron beam hits it and that changes the internal state of the sample also the energy of the beam neutron beam changes in this process the energy of neutron as you can read the energy of neutron and the internal state of the sample is modified in this process so the observer has to keep a track not only of the flight direction of the scattered neutron but also of its energy so the three methods that can be used is first triple axis spectrometer time of flight spectrometer spin echo spectrometer now let's see the diagrammatic representation of it of the inelastic neutron scattering so this is our neutron source okay now this neutron source is going to emit a high energy polychromatic neutron beam this beam is going to travel straight away to the monochromator now the name itself says this mo this monochromator is going to send high energy single high energy beam to the sample okay so the beam goes to the sample it hits the sample and the beam further travels to the analyzer after striking the analyzer the beam is sent to the detector and the measurements are done at the detector okay now if the monochromator and analyzer are showing different energies then we can say this is an inelastic event as you can see the energy here is represented by ei that is incident and here it is ef representing final state now let's look at the equation see this is the kinetic energy of the incident neutron mn is the mass of neutron and p is the momentum now momentum is represented as h cross k where k is the wave vector of the neutron so if p is equal to h cross k then p square is going to be h cross square k square so the kinetic energy of the incident neutron will be kinetic energy of incident neutron is going to be h cut square k square upon 2 mn okay this is for incident neutron now in case of stirred neutron the kinetic energy will be given by this equation that is h cut square k prime square upon 2 mn so this equation is for scattered neutron now conservation of energy states conservation of energy states is the energy should remain constant as h cross square k square upon 2 mn is equal to h cut square k prime square upon 2 mn plus or minus h cross omega here this h cross omega is the energy of photon created or absorbed in the process okay so this is basically the equation part now we'll see the applications of inelastic neutron scattering the first and foremost application is it is used to measure the details of atomic and molecular motion we can study about the atomic and molecular motion of of the sample the second is it is used to study the composition of the sample like what are the constituents of the sample how it's made it's made from out of what all those things can be studied using this technique 
Thirdly, it is used in condensed matter research to study atomic uh, and molecular properties. And it I, uh, in INS or inelastic neutron scattering provides information concerning the dynamics of both acoustic modes and optic modes in a crystalline structure. Also, it can be used to calculate the experimental heat capacity and to test the lattice dynamical models. So these are few of the applications of the technique in elastic neutron scattering. Now let's see some of the basic Q&A of this technique. The first one is what is the advantage of using this technique? It is used to study the composition of metal and to study or to measure details about the atomic and molecular motions. What are the disadvantages of this process? Neutron source have low flux compared to X-ray source. Secondly, it requires rel relatively large amount of sample for neutron scattering measurement. Now, if the question is why neutron is selected? So the answer to this question is neutron have no charge. It reacts differently with different isotopes. It has high penetrating power. Uh, neutrons don't heat up or destroy the sample. They have the right wavelength and the right kinetic energy required. Also, one thing that you need to note is in elastic neutron scattering, it's particularly sensitive to the motion of hydrogen atoms relative to that of other atoms including deuterium. Thank you so much for watching.